So Roundabout was No Goblin's first game. And when we were trying to think of what our first game was going to be, we knew it had to be something like mechanically super interesting. It had to be something super unique. But also as two people making our first game for a business, like it also needed to be something that had stable roots and had like a reference we could go to if things went wrong on the design side. At least this game did it right and we can like REM to that and fix that. And so we were going through the games that we liked that kind of had been neglected. And one of those was Kururin, of course. This is Kuru Kuru Kururin. I apologize for the pronunciation. It's a Game Boy Advance game published by Nintendo in 2001 in Japan, Europe, and Australia. Maybe you recognize it from a couple brief appearances in Smash. And it rules. It's also on Nintendo Switch Online if you want to check it out. By the way, hello, my name is Ben Hansen, and this is MinMax, a place about games, friends, and getting better. So there are more games out there than you realize taking inspiration from Nintendo's forgotten gem of the Game Boy Advance. Speaking of which, here's the co-creator of a game called Spinny's Journey. I'm Johan Santelli, and this is a game that I made with friends between two jobs. Talk about the game design, where your inspirations came from. Yeah, but it's obviously um, Kuru Kuru Kururin. Obviously, it's not a well-known game where I live. I live in France. I played a lot with one of my best friends. Back in those days, we only have one Game Boy and we just uh, take turns. Yeah, I have uh, really fond memories of that time. This is a game that really teach me to be patient. The kind of game that I wanted to make. The impact of Kur in, in Australia, like having it be one of those like limited pile of launch title games, like puts it in a special place in general. Like I played a lot of Kur in, uh, on my GBA and I was like, oh yeah, this definitely stuck with me. And so it's like one of those things that was always super surprising coming over to the US and being like, oh, no one knows about this game. This game never existed essentially for, you know, 300 million people. When Game Boy Advance first launched, there was not a lot of different titles available. We had Super Mario Advance. I believe there was an F-Zero game. And so I wanted to just play as much as I could because I was so excited to have this new Game Boy Advance. So I imported a copy of Kudu 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 blindly off of eBay to play it around the Game Boy Advance launch. And I was not disappointed. It was such a simple, easy to pick up and play concept, but it had so much depth to it. The gameplay is really simple, yeah, it's simple, but it's also profound. I think the thing that makes Kudurin special is the tension and release of navigating this constantly spinning stick without hitting the walls. And the moment where it hits the walls, you kind of jump and you're like, oh, I hit the wall. But there's also these kind of breakpoints where you can kind of rest for a moment before you navigate further into the maze and, and move around. And I think that, that kind of tension and release is very important to what makes it so thrilling. What genre is that? Puzzle reflexes. I don't know. Puzzle reflexes. I like that. I think that worked. It was just such a thrilling game and it stuck with me for years. So when I had an opportunity to make a game on Switch, I was thinking about the games that I grew up playing and really loved and Kudu Kudu Kudunin being one of them. I had to pull a little bit of inspiration from that, maybe more than a little <laughs> bit, depending on who you ask. And that's how the idea to create a game like Vitamin Connection was born. It's kind of the thing where I look around and it's like, oh, there's another Kurin kind of inspired game. That's awesome. I had this thought in the back of my mind when we were developing the initial prototype for Vitamin Connection that, you know, if this turns into something, maybe we could show it to Nintendo and propose it as a Kuda 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 Dean game. Uh, personally, I would love to develop one. But instead, we got the opportunity to create this original game in Vitamin Connection. But in the back of my mind, the roots are always there. There's like things where like you know, the rotation speed and the amount of kickback you get on a wall and stuff like that stuff, like Kurin has dialed that in pretty close. And like when we try, tried messing with it, it's like, no, they, they've kind of like, there's a reason why it's tuned like this. Let's try and stick around that stuff. I think the sequel, Kududin Paradise, probably on my top five favorite games of all time. Wow. Of course, the GameCube one, Kududin Squash is really wonderful too. When I explain to people what it is, this game, it's really hard to tell them the, the name. Your confidence for saying the name of Kuru Kuru is awe-inspiring. You're just letting it fly out there. How are you so confident saying the name of this game that is challenging to pronounce for most people? Nihongo ga sukoshi wa karimasu, demo mara jōzu jarimasen. It's about like the stick spinning, so kururin is like spinning around. Okay. So it's just it just like sounds like a kuru kuru kururin is just like uh, spin spin spinning something like that. It's just fun to say. <laughs> And of course, Kududin is the main character of the game, the little blue bird yeah. with, a, with his like pilot goggles. And the Helirin is, of course, the, the ship that he uh, pilots. Kudu Kudu Kududin is also, I think, it's like telling Kududin the bird to spin around, Kudu Kudu. This past week, we celebrated the third anniversary of the release of Vitamin Connection on Nintendo Switch. It's 
probably the game that I've developed in my 16 years here at WayForward that is the most personal to me. Uh, there's the most like of my own sort of just design sensibility and DNA in it. It didn't sell a lot. We didn't make it for, for money. We make it for the love of the, of the Kuru Kuru style game. The few players who, who, who find it, if they see uh, Spinny's uh, journey, they think of Roundabout and not Kuru Kuru Kuru. <laughs> so it's, it's weird. We've had a bit over a million people who've played Roundabout. Roundabout pays our bonuses, essentially, for people. The fact that that can raise any money, like nine years out, is just incredible. I wonder if Roundabout sold more than the original Kuru 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 and ever did. Probably. <laughs> I, I would guess probably. At least in Europe. That's yeah. a bizarre thing to think about. It's like, oh, Nintendo, maybe there was gold in those hills if you just filled yeah. it full of jokes and skeletons and nonsense. If you figured out video on the GBA a couple of years earlier, like, you would have been set. <laughs> Do you want Nintendo to, to try making another Crew Crew at some point? Ah, uh, yes. I will really love it. But uh, I, I don't think the studio will make them. They still live. I, I don't know. Eating, I think, is the name of it. Oh, they're still around. Yeah, they're making like they helped on Pikmin 3 Deluxe. DNF oh, yeah. Duel, it turns out. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate they worked on. So they're they're around. Are you still holding on to that dream of like maybe Nintendo will like way forward enough to let us make a new Kuru Kuru? <laughs> you know, I we recently got the opportunity to collaborate with them on Advance Wars 1 plus 2 reboot yeah. camp. And so that was really a, a dream fulfillment for me. I feel very honored and satisfied that we were able to have that experience with them. Who knows what the future holds? Yeah, satisfied. Okay, but in the list of franchises you'd like to work on, I mean, you got Advance Wars up there. Give us, give us the top five Nintendo stuff here. Well, Kudu 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 Nin. Number one? Uh, you know is up there. I would say it's probably number one. Wow, yeah. above Zelda and Mario. Yeah, you know, here's the thing about games like Zelda and Mario. They do them so well. I. I am happy to see them keep doing it. I, I'd love to work on something obscure, you know? So for me, I, I think about games like uh, Kuda 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 and I think of games like, you know, Rhythm Heaven, WarioWare. There's also things like Chibi Robo that would be interesting to explore. And Nintendo has your number. Yeah, they do. We're, okay. we're, you know, we're definitely tight with them. They're, they're great people. It's been really fun seeing people kind of delve into the back catalog of like ideas and things that like, you know, could have more potential and like, dive into them and it's awesome seeing other people make them because it means I can play them fresh and not play the same thing for you know 18 months. I think there's a ton of value of like taking a jump off point and, and like going okay let's take what's here and let's just run with it and go wild. I think we are far enough away from like an infringing Nintendo property yeah. that they're, they're pretty fine but like I don't know, maybe we'll sneak Pikachu in, in the next game and see how far we can push it. <laughs> If you thought, hey, this video wasn't bad, well, there's a whole lot more like it on MinMax's YouTube channel. Please help us out by subscribing to our channel and checking out the MinMax Show podcast, also available on your favorite podcast app, the best, most thorough discussion about games on the internet with the deepest dive, our monthly community trivia show with prizes called Trivia Tower, and a whole lot more. Thanks so much for your support, everybody. All you gotta do is click that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it.